Local 4 News starts now with a breaking news alert. Yes, that breaking news. Detroit police coming under fire twice tonight. You're looking at live pictures from the latest scene. Detroit police tell us officers were shot at multiple times by someone driving a truck through southwest Detroit. This all ended at the Southfield Service Drive and West Outer Drive in Allen Park. We know three people are now in custody and police have recovered one long gun. We're working to learn more about the situation and we'll bring you any updates as we get them. That happened just hours after a man shot point blank at a Detroit police officer on Detroit's west side, then carjacked a mother and her children. Tonight, police are still searching for that shooter. The dangerous scene unfolded at the start of rush hour when officers on patrol heard gunshots. It led them to McNichols and Burwood. That's not too far from the lodge. Mara McDonald is live there to walk us through this chain of events, Mara. Kimberly, when even the Detroit police chief says it's complicated, you know it has been quite a night. Where I'm standing at right now is one of three scenes involved in this, and this is the spot where a Detroit police officer was shot at at point blank range, and that woman had her silver Ford Flex stolen right in her driveway. Let me take you through the whole thing. Police in the skies looking for the man who shot at their officer and stole that woman's silver Ford Flex. It all started about a mile and a half away near Greenfield and McNichols, where DPD officers were on routine patrol. They hear shots uh, and see a car that they believe is shooting at another vehicle. Police try to make a traffic stop. Instead, the three men inside this red car make a run for it and crash into this church. They all bail out of the car, which they leave at Mendota and McNichols and take off on foot. At the same time, a mom with her two kids is coming home. One of the fleeing suspects who's trying to go into her yard asks if he can hide out at her house. Of course, she says no. Uh, and goes into her home. At this point, police are right on him. They say he turns around and fires at an officer at point blank range and then runs, steals the woman's silver Ford Flex from her driveway. We're very fortunate. He's blessed to, to be here upright talking and, and okay. Back here live tonight, police are telling us of the three suspects they were chasing. They've got two in custody. They are still looking for the one who's behind the wheel of that silver Ford Flex who fired at the officer. The license plate on that SUV, BVM 574. If you see it, DPD would like to hear from you. The chief also telling me tonight they recovered three guns from that red car that you saw those suspects and it means all those men were at one point armed and as far as that police officer who was shot at the chief says he did not return fire we're live on detroit's west side i'm mara mcdonald local four it is a busy night for detroit police mara we appreciate it new reporting tonight from the washington post on that fbi raid of former president trump's mar-a-lago home sources tell the paper the fbi was after classified documents relating to nuclear weapons the Post sources wouldn't say if it involved weapons belonging to the U.S. or to another country, but today Attorney General Merrick Garland broke with Department of Justice protocol and talked a bit about the search. He said he personally approved the search. The Justice Department has filed a motion asking a federal court to unseal the Trump warrant. The department filed the motion to make public the warrant and receipt in light of the former president's public confirmation of the search the surrounding circumstances, and the substantial public interest in this matter. Late today, the court ordered the Justice Department to meet with Trump's attorneys to see if they oppose unsealing the warrant. No word on that yet. They have until tomorrow afternoon to respond. In a statement today, former president said his attorneys and representatives were cooperating fully. Oakland County is investing in a plan to help human trafficking survivors rebuild their lives. Victim advocates say the program will go beyond anything offered at most state and federal levels. Megan Woods is live in Royal Oak with how it will all work. Megan. Yeah, Kimberly Devon, that new pilot program is called Survivor to Thriver. And the point of it is to pay for survivors to enjoy the little things that maybe you and I take for granted. For example, a short trip to the zoo where we are right now, starting a new hobby, maybe doing program or uh, professional development to uh, start or launch a career. Being stuck in survival mode is, is not 
a healthy way to live. Allison Mercer of Common Ground helps human trafficking survivors across eight counties, including Oakland County. It can be, you know, your neighbor, someone down the street, someone that goes to the same church as you. People just don't know who the survivors are in their community, but they're everywhere. There's state and federal funding for essentials, but Allison says that's not all survivors need to rebuild their lives. You know, we can go to the movies, go to the zoo, do things that we might think, oh, that'll help distress. Well, some people we work with don't have that option and neither do their kids. And so sometimes this program is meant to fill that gap because funding does not exist for this. Until now, Oakland County Board of Commissioners unanimously voted to use close to $11,000 from their special project fund to help kickstart pilot program Survivor to Thriver. It's just a great thing to be able to say, oh, you want to do something that might seem so simple to us but they've never done it before or they haven't done it in years and we can finally say, you know what? Yeah, let's go do something like that. Commissioner Janet Jackson, chair of the county's human trafficking task force, couldn't be proud of um, I had a survivor tell me one time a task force can be nothing more than a talk first talk force if we're just trying to raise awareness and doing community events. But when you touch the lives of individuals and help create a new beginning for them, that's impactful. And that task force plans to meet next week to figure out a start date for this program. Live in Royal Oak, I'm Megan Woods, Local 4. Megan, you said this is Oakland County. Do other counties or states have similar program? Well, when we spoke to Allison, who you heard from earlier, she says this is very unique to Oakland County. And once this starts getting uh, running up, they're hoping that the community will help and donate as well. Great program. All right, Megan, thanks. An update to a story we first brought you last night at 11. Police have made an arrest in the beating of Jason Riddle. He was found badly beaten on first in Bagley last month near the MGM Casino and DTE. His wallet, ID and phone were missing. Police say Riddle is still in critical condition at the hospital. We're working to learn more information about the arrest. The Westland man accused of murdering a Grand Blanc teenager is expected to go before a judge tomorrow. Avion Sanders is charged with first degree murder in the death of 18 year old Jacob Hills. Prosecutors say the two left a party in Detroit together last month. They say Sanders killed Hills, stole Hills AR-15 and left his body in the basement of a home on West Warren. Hills had just graduated from Grand Blanc High School and was missing for days before his body was found. GM's Orient Assembly plant is expected to reopen tomorrow morning after a murder inside the plant early this morning. Investigators say the 48-year-old cleaning contractor got into a fight with another contractor overnight. 49-year-old Gregory Robertson was found on the floor, bleeding from his head. He was rushed to the hospital where he died. Robertson's wife told us he worked the overnight shift at the plant for the past seven months. He would give you the shirt off his back. I mean, he's had some problems, and, and who hasn't, you know? But for the most part, he was a good guy. He, he, he's done some bad things. Um, he, he paid the price for it, and he's been home the last two years, and he's been doing such a good job. Officers found the suspect standing near a loading dock near Robertson's body. We expect to learn more about charges tomorrow. A judge declares a mistrial in a civil lawsuit in the Flint water crisis. Jury couldn't reach a verdict over whether two engineering firms should bear some responsibility for Flint's lead contaminated water. The lawsuit was brought by four people who were children at the time. They claimed the two companies did not do enough to get Flint to treat the water in the first place. Attorneys for the company say they were lumped in with quote bad actors saying state and local officials controlled the major decisions about the water. The trial can be held again with a different jury. We'll see. It was day two of testimony in the retrial of two men accused of plotting to kidnap Governor Whitmer. Today, an undercover witness for the FBI was on the stand as secret recordings of the Wolverine Watchmen were played. In one recording, defendant Barry Croft is heard naming Whitmer while telling a group angry over COVID lockdowns to go after politicians. Defense attorneys argue the jury is only hearing a few seconds of more than 1,000 hours of taped conversations. For the first time, Russia confirms talks are underway for a prisoner swap that involves Novi's Paul Whelan. According to the Washington Post, the Russian Foreign Ministry says negotiations are taking place on a channel set up by President Biden and Russian President Vladimir Putin last year. The U.S. is trying to secure the release of Paul Whelan and, of course, WNBA star Brittany Griner in exchange for a convicted Russian arms trafficker.